What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Simulation for the Nation here. Welcome back to another how-to guide. Today, we are going to be looking into the Thrustmaster SimTask Farm Stick and how you can program this to set up when you first start to use it and also go into a bit of a review of my experiences with it and the recommendations I would have. So, we start off, of course, with the, with the hardware itself, as you can see on the joystick cam here. Um, and this is designed and uh, very much intentioned to be plug and play from the get-go. So that is exactly what we're going to have a look into. When you first plug this one in, the key bindings have been set up and scripted with uh, association with Farm Sim and with Giants. So that when you plug it in, you don't have to do anything. It will work for you perfectly well and you can get away with it. And it, you know, it's going to function and feature very well for you. There may well be some changes that you have to make there and we're going to get into that one. But before we get into the game to have a look at that, we just want to find it in our general settings and have a look at a few basic things you'd look to want to perhaps change around a bit. So uh, when you're going to come down through to your um, different devices here, currently we're looking at the, that's the Thrustmaster B696, your uh, gear stick and the gear shift. And here is the sim task. Now, the first thing I'd recommend you do is have a play around with the uh, sensitivity because that's going to be the key thing that you can change quite quickly as well. It's going to allow you to have the option to change things about how how quickly you pan around and, and how you're able to, to control your character or your machine in game. So something you don't have to look into in, in here will be all of the different uh, options there. It's very much a trial and error. So uh, get in there, have a play with it and see what works for you and, and what you'd perhaps want to change. But we're going to leave that all as it is for right now. When it comes down to the different options for uh, key binders and key mappings, the entirety of the joystick is 100% uh, configurable to your your own needs. So everyone plays farms in a little bit of a different way. You might want to be solely looking at forestry. You might want to just for farming and for telehandler work or something else completely. But the, the great thing about this is it gives you that option to do that. So when you're in your keyboard controls, you'd want to change from keyboard into gamepad. And you're going to see your controllers line up here. You've got the Thrustmaster B96, which is your wheel, and you've got your farm stick here. Now, the way that it's been set up, I haven't changed how this has been configured. They do kind of mix the two in together there. So anything you want to change for the joystick, you want to be looking at where it has SimTask farm stick right. Uh, and that will allow you to get it all configured in there. So nice and straightforward. Now, what you can do is you can come through all of these different configurations and change them to suit your needs. Uh, and that'll get you set up for success and again it's very you can do this in game so as you're, as you're playing around with it you get the option to really see uh you know is that the right button does that configuration work what do i need to change next that sort of thing and we're going to get into that in game in just a moment so we're going to have a look at one of our own uh, jcbs in game and see how we get on with that and show you what i like about the uh what i like about the joystick so let's get in there all right, so we're at the Northern Farms. We're up at South Ely Farm here, and we're going to have a little bit of a play around uh, and move some silage around with this. Uh, and we've also got a, a John Deere over there, so we can have a look at some other bits and pieces as well. Now, the first thing I really like about the joystick uh, is the fact that everything, it's so very well thought out from an ergonomic standpoint. Everything is within reach. You have so much control with your thumb uh, that it's, uh, it's uh, quite incredible, actually. And all of these buttons on the top have uh, multiple different features and means because you do have the option to combine them with two triggers on the back as well. So it's almost like a double input there, uh, which is great. The JCB we have at the moment, I've selected this one because it has quite a few features that I wanted to play around with. And all of everything that you can see is uh, that's functionable, that can move, has all been moved with the joysticks. So for example, the, the whole front end is of course, but then all the doors are opened with the joystick as well, which is really pretty cool. Um, like I say, you're able to jump on in and just configure things in the game set. So if you want to go to the escape menu, you're going to come all the way down to your little uh, keyboard controls. Again, you hit gamepad and then you can change everything in here as well. The only thing you can't do in here is the sensitivity of the axes. So that's something you'd want to look into uh, at the main menu like we just had a look at. But once you're inside here, like I say, there's so many different features on here. I've currently got it all set up so I can start the tractor or the machine on the joystick as well. My, uh, I have this rocker switch that I can use to look around and everything's working. Um, and then everything else is just on the on the basic joystick itself there. So I've got everything from lift uh, and crowding of the front end. I can extend out my boom as well on the rocker stick. It's nice and easy. I don't have to press too many extra buttons to get that. On my previous joystick there, I had to hold down like a combination of three buttons, whereas this is just a lot easier. And then when you're actually in, uh, when, you're, when you're happy and you've got your forward and reverse rocker on the orange switch there, and if I press one of the buttons on the back of the joystick on the trigger, I can then uh, control my, um, my transmission. And now on this particular JCB here, there are eight uh, speeds forward and, rever and then reverse, I've got three. So 
when you are doing some pit work for example there you want to be able to be uh, quite quick at navigating through those all so uh, that's what we've done with our stuff set up at a d2 uh, you just want to be able to to have all the functionality without struggling or without feeling the need to struggle there so i'm really happy with that and then we can just get used to moving around here um and getting a bit more comfortable with the with the machine in its entirety uh there you go let's just put that over there it's a lot smoother for me um and i find myself able just to control everything a little bit more comfortably as well this brings me on to the next great point now which is going to be around the the build quality of the the joystick here uh we are you know i find this to be a lot more solid i was previously using the logitech extreme 3d pro um now to be to its credit it is predominantly a flight stick but i found it, this to be a lot more a uh, lot more solid in its behavior uh, it feels heavier in the hand as well when i try and tip or crowd the bucket the whole joystick doesn't want to move with me it's just moving the, the joystick and there's a bit more resistance in the push there as well uh which i feel like is is very nice to see the the actual responsiveness of the uh the, the loader functions that i'm putting in here for the uh the lifting and the crowding is is very smooth very very responsive as well i don't feel like i'm having to push too far to get anything to happen uh but yeah it is it's giving me everything i want uh and yeah very nice and heavy the all the buttons feel really good and really solid there the buttons on the bottom here are great as well you can program those into do other things i have for example down here on the right i have the gps configurations the front three here are to do with uh, menu features so i'm going to access the store and access the main menu you've got your attach implement button there as well so if you do need to i'll put this down here for example i can just detach that and then drive away <clears throat> and then come back in and pick it up again i've got two uh vehicle selection tabs here as well so i can just tab through my vehicles nice and quickly uh and then on this side i have got all those programs in yet but you can put additional machine functions in there if you really needed to uh, and just get it all set up in a way that works best for you um but yeah it's ultimately just a really really nice and simple machine to uh to get to use and also just very feels very great in your hand there what i particularly like as well is that as we come back here um the doors and windows you can change these very quickly so for example there they're on the, the the twist axis so i don't need to press any other buttons for that side there that just shuts uh and then over here as well i can make it do that one now if you have a uh an implement on the front which has like a grab for example you can press the trigger down and just move the whole thing sideways and that will open or shut your grab so they've even thought about putting those extra third service actions in there as well uh, so you don't have to worry about configuring that. Uh, from a build quality standpoint as well, I do find that the um, that there's no axis drift that I was finding with other vehicles um, on my other joystick. So, and what I mean by that is when I set that up to let's say left and right here would tilt or crowd my bucket, um, the joystick itself would give a little bit of uh, a little bit of left. So I'd find my bucket would always be doing this very slowly. Uh, and I'd always have to keep correcting it. Same thing if I had like a grab or a, a bail grab or a muck fork on there as well. The same thing would, would apply. But I don't see any of that happening here, which is great. Um, and then this is, yeah, just like I say, that really adds to the experience. because You don't have to worry about it at all. And then when you're, of course, when you're on here, you can uh, quite easily just shuttle through all the different speeds that you need to. Um, on, I'm going to jump into a tractor now so I can show you how that works in a little bit more detail. But you get the idea from a pit sensor um, of how it's working. Now, like I say, you'll want to probably configure all your key bindings to be a little bit more uh, appropriate for your own needs there. And that's uh, absolutely possible and very easy to do. The defaults are pretty good to get you going and just to figure it out. Uh, and now with the latest patch that came in, you don't even have to um, change anything. They'll be in the system from get go. And it's literally plug in that machine, uh, uh, plug in your joystick to the machine and you're good to go. Uh, when I'm in the John Deere here, we start up the tractor once again on the joystick. And then what I'm going to show you on here really is... Now, of course, I ha on the joystick yourself, you have uh, the, the buttons to power on the tools and to lift, lower, and raise the implements. You can also configure those so um, by uh, pressing two different buttons, like the trigger on the back, for example, and the lift button that I have, it will lower and raise the front and the rear at the same time. And you can also do that similarly for powering on the equipment as well. Uh, but what I really like about this is in my current setup here, this is a great tractor to show it off with because I have forward and reverse, obviously, which you can see on the uh, shifter on the side. But then I can also go through my gears. So that's going through um, the shuttle there. And then as I go up through the ranges, an A, B, C, D, 
and E. So it makes it just so much easier. I have a gear shifter that you can just see down here, but I don't need to use it because for this particular model, it's all on, on this joystick. So when you are in the field and you're working, you don't have to worry about switching out to, to controlling your um, hardware and make sure it all works. You've got everything you need just on one stick. And so that is the review of the Thrustmaster farm stick. Well, kind of a review and a how to plug it all in and how to uh, function with it. I mean, overall, I really, really like this. And once again, a huge shout out to Thrustmaster for providing me with uh, an early access to the hardware itself. It is available to order now online. They did go through a period where the pre-orders were sold out, but they are back in stock now. So you can go and grab a hold of it. And it's definitely worthwhile plugging in and see. Let me know if you do get it in the comments down below how you've set yours up and how that's working for you. Because ultimately, I think it's just going to be a really, really fun uh, piece of kit, which really adds to the to the whole immersion from uh, from a, a user's perspective. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, uh, do uh, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. If you've enjoyed this one and you found it useful, then please do hit that like button. Subscribe for more. That would be greatly appreciated. I've been Simulation for the Nation. We're on Northern Farms here. And uh, we'll be coming with a bit more of this very shortly, hopefully, because testing is going well. well. Hopefully, we'll see a little bit more of an update soon. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Do stay safe. Enjoy what you're doing as always. And we'll see you next time.